Hello everyone, I'm Penny Hay. I'm Reader and Research Fellow at Bath Spa University in the UK. I'm also Director of Research for a charity, House of Imagination. House of Imagination provides a range of spaces for children and young people to collaborate with creative professionals. It is a home for improvisation, creativity and innovation, and a place to make these visible through research. House of Imagination celebrates an experimental research-based approach to explore the potential, the challenges and the opportunities in the area of creative resistance and how this invites a new pedagogical approach. Signature projects include School Without Walls, Forest of Imagination and House of Imagination pop-up spaces. These research projects develop new ways to approach creative learning across the arts education sector, prioritising creativity, critical thinking and co-inquiry. Artists and creative professionals work alongside young people to co-design a creative pedagogy using the city or village as a campus for learning and an experimental pedagogical site. I'm a big fan of Bob and Roberta Smith's work and he says that art is your human right. Arts education is not a luxury, it is the highest form of human creativity. I think Ken Robinson said that and sadly we lost Sir Ken recently and our thoughts are with his family. Article 31 of the United Nations Rights of the Child says that every child has the right to participate freely in cultural life and the arts. We need to make the case for the role of the arts in all of our lives. We need to set up environments of inquiry. House of Imagination is researching and supporting children and young people's creativity through partnerships between educational settings, in this case Tate Modern, artists and cultural centres and in, to set up environments of inquiry. Art emphasises the development of the creative potential of each individual and makes these processes visible. In our research we're focusing on four key themes. We're looking at the creative dispositions of children and young people, the creative relationships between the adults and the children and between the children themselves, the creative values that underpin why we do what we do and the creative learning environments that we co-design. In my PhD research I was focusing in on the notion that children can develop an identity of themselves as artists so I wanted to investigate and provide an interpretive account of educational practice that supports children's creative development and their own self-concept of themselves as artists. Here you can see Bo in sustained inquiry and possi possibility thinking. As adults, we can inspire children and young people's imagination and support the key dispositions of creative learning and visual inquiry. Questioning, investigating, observing, describing, exploring multiple viewpoints, reasoning with evidence, finding complexity, comparing and connecting. And here Jay, who's obsessed with mountains and monsters, all with a sense of adventure that linked back to his fascinations with adventure stories and cartoons. They each have a body of work. So what does a creative school look like? How can you sense creativity being palpable? How can you make creativity visible? Here we have exhibitions of process, glow moments, to borrow Mag Maggie McClure's phrase making creativity visible, to borrow the phrase from Project Zero. Anna Craft, who was also our patron and my PhD supervisor, who we sadly lost, she said that being creative is a fundamental aspect of human nature. All children are capable of manifesting and developing their creativity as a life skill. One of our signature projects is called School Without Walls, now in its 10th year. School Without Walls is a co-inquiry, a residency-based model of experiential and creative learning that transforms both the curriculum and the learning culture in schools. The inquiry-based approach embeds arts in the schools, working alongside educators, artists, mentors and cultural centres to co-design a creative curriculum across phases, importantly engaging children and young people in authentic learning in real-world contexts valuing their agency and interests. Adults work alongside the children as companions in learning to facilitate meaningful creative inquiries, connecting learning to the, to the real world. 
Children are engaged in the cultural life of the place where they live as active citizens and stewards of the environment, helping children become confident and progressive thinkers who feel a deep sense of connection and purpose. Children have a right to express themselves in a hundred languages, a phrase I've borrowed from Rich Amelia, their thoughts, their feelings, their ideas, their theories, and giving the children the freedom to follow their fascinations. Each child and adult actually has a reflective diary, a sketchbook, a visual inquiry space to record and reflect on throughout the project and across the curriculum. Here the children are co-designing, co-curating a space for learning, a gallery of learning, developing their skills and independence in a, a widening range of environments. So here they've taken over an empty shop in the city to show their parents and carers what they've been involved in. And here we're setting up a house of imagination in different contexts, in different spaces. So lovely Sir Ken on the right, giving a crypt to the children. They've designed, co-designed a marble wall with our um, Professor Anthony Head working alongside St Andrew's Primary School in Bath. And other spaces, taking over the gallery, the art school, setting up in a secondary school, the Skype conversation across Serbia and Spain, Rwanda and Radstock and then taking over a space in a gallery as a maths lesson to explore endless possibilities with Alf Coles, the professor of maths who works at the University of Bristol. And you may know our signature project, The Forest of Imagination. So I ask what might a creative city or a creative village look like? Forest of Imagination is now in its seventh year and co-designed with Andrew Grant, landscape architect, who's famous for his gardens by the bay in Singapore. Forest of Imagination brings nature and creativity to the heart of the public realm. It highlights the importance of art, nature and creativity in our lives and invites everyone to have a conversation about the, the importance of these themes in a playful, immersive environment and for all ages, and it's free. Creative learning and thinking develops our habits of mind for lifelong learning, for life-wide creativity, and taking these creative ideas into action. In 2016, we took over the space inside and outside Bath Abbey, an iconic building in the city, and we shone the light on the need to save the lemurs and the baobabs in Madagascar. Anthony Head designed this beautiful eye migration piece with a thousand butterflies, a thousand different butterflies. Everybody's different and everybody's welcome. It also showed the capacity of Bath as a creative ecosystem, the natural wonder of the city, and above all, the capacity of forests to inspire creativity in everyone. We co-designed immersive installations with local schools, Bath College and both universities. We took over, over seven years, different spaces in the city so that the, the children from the schools could be part of the process, working alongside creative professionals as role models. Last year, we took over the Holborn Museum and here a beautiful piece designed by Piers Taylor, the architect, with Charlie Brentnell, who's a wood magician, shining a light on hope, a beacon of hope and a nod to the homeless in the city and key themes around creative inclusive placemaking, everyday creativity, co-design, co-production, the sense of belonging and engagement, well-being, connection to nature and sustainability, and importantly, active citizenship, civic innovation, and social transformation. For me, the young people's activism recently, yesterday with TED Countdown, is vital in the face of the climate emergency, placing the sustainable development goals at the heart of learning and addressing real world issues together with hope. We have an amazing project in Mumbai, Bombay, working alongside young people in Compound 13, an exploratory lab that is thinking about the notion of a living curriculum, addressing issues of work, life, sustainability, and rethinking waste. So to end, just to say thank you very much everyone. I hope you've enjoyed the conference. You can get in touch with me on any of these websites. 
And just to end on one of my favourite quotes, everyone is an artist. To be a teacher is my greatest work of art. Joseph Boyce, 1972. Thank you very much.